everyone, I'm Ritika Mathur from India. And I'm Xiangling from Taiwan, and we both came from the uh, Copenhagen Institute of Insertion Design. And that's also where we did this project together, Memory Maps. So our focus for this project was to look into the interesting space during the early stages of Alzheimer's. So normally, the stage uh, from the early stages, early diagnosis of the disease to a slightly milder stages of disease, there's a long time, so there's a couple of years, and that is a time when there's a sense of helplessness that is associated with the disease, and people feel that uh, their, their confidence levels are declining. So it's also like the Alzheimer's disease is also known as a family disease because it affects not just the patients, but also their care partners. And they all experience a sense of, over I mean, they have the overwhelming em emotions. So the important thing here was to uh, provide emotional connect and build a sense of support system around sharing and preserving stories or shared experiences. We started our project by uh, talk, talking to and uh, spending time with three families who were suffering from early stages of Alzheimer's. When we spoke to people with Alzheimer's, we realized that they were very much like people of their age, full of life and a treasure chest of experiences. However, the experience was gradually However, the disease was gradually taking away this effervescence from them, making them feel weak and unsure because they would often forget recent events or conversation and often ask the same things over and over again. While speaking to the family and the care partners, we realized that they also feel lost and lonely and they feel that the disease is taking away their loved one and slowly creating a void due to which they start to feel more distant and helpless because often uh, there is a lot of uh, healthcare or uh, support information related to health but related to emotional care that's always like it's slightly confusing and there's still enough there's still a lot of scope to understand that domain lastly the feeling of feeling accompanied because in today's world uh, families are spread across different geographic locations so our design challenge was how might we facilitate patients and their families to support each other by sharing experiences together and also when they are apart uh, memory Maps was built through an ideative design pro iterative design process uh, through constant feedback and user testing with the users. Uh, our initial prototypes were built around weight, uh, finding and reminder based system but with initial uh, testing we realized that the core aspect was more uh, not just monitoring and uh, tracking these daily activities but also creating confidence and securing confidence in the present moment. So we looked at exploring these three visions by creating multiple scenarios and looking and defining a, the key opportunity area through which we designed the idea of memory maps which is designed for early stages of Alzheimer's facilitating them and their f uh, families to share stories and feel connected. The concept basically helps patients and families to share stories through digital devices and revisit location-based stories uh, when on the go combined with a physical device which sparks conversations through reminiscing about these memories with loved ones at home. I would like to play a video now to outline uh, the concept in detail. Um, our way of enjoying each other was to go for long walks together and have conversations. Those small stories along the way made the journey of life beautiful. But last December I was diagnosed with early stages of Al Alzheimer's. I know what I have today might be lost tomorrow. My grandpa is my superhero. He knows every story around here, like how people built the harbor and the history of our town. And what we did uh, when I was really young. I miss his stories, stories that we share, that are special to us. I miss that when I go meet him. Remember, Grandpa? This is the place we went for ice cream every summer. Remember, Grandpa? This is the place we went for ice cream every summer. We always sat in those two chairs in front of the shop looking at the river in front of us. You always order one more bottle of chocolate for me. This is the wall where um, Elias fell down when he was about nine years old. I noticed he hurt his arm. 
This is the wall where um, Elias fell down when he was about nine years old. It's actually working the other way around now. I want to leave behind a world of stories for him. To know me and for him to make me know me. I want you to know, Grandpa, that you might be forgetful, but you will never be forgotten. So we see immense impact and potential in this concept because it boosts the emotional connectivity between uh, family members through shared experiences but it also mentally stimulates the patient throughout the recording and the reminiscing process through which they feel more empowered and confident. Uh, it actually uh, plays a lot, uh, it strengthens the positive outlook which is required to deal with such a daunting disease by supporting the emotional connect and strengthening the family bonds through shared experiences. It also has a physical tangible uh, device which acts as a conversation starter and also enables playful interactions when the, cust uh, when the patient is alone at home. Uh, the duality of the digital and the physical interface uh, makes the solution omnipresent and it focuses on the present moment and to cherish and to nourish that instead of focusing on what's gone. Uh, the personalized sound. Uh, sorry, yeah. The personal the personalized sound uh, plays a crucial role in storytelling, and uh, the patients really found it very effective to listen to uh, their own family members about the uh, and listen to them talking about a certain place or certain events in their life. Uh, the, there's a map which is customized, which uh, lays stress on the uh, character of a place rather than the scale or the distance. And the technology used was very basic and something which they were already used to using, so which made it very powerful and easy. Yeah. yeah. And the system overview of this uh, mirror map design is consists of four parts, including the database, website, and mobile apps, and the uh, device itself. And the database stores the memory itself with uh, certain locations, and the mobile app and website um, actually. Uh, you can retrieve and record stories and uh, access to a database at a certain location. And as for the device itself, um, it actually just syn synchronized to the database and um, is implemented through RFID um, stickers and using RFID writers and readers uh, on the side. So we have been producing this prototype in different, different solutions and different technologies. <clears throat> from NFC to RFID and um, today we specially uh, brought up the uh, little version of prototype. It was uh, in a very big size and it's in Copenhagen now. So we, especially for this event we made a scaled down version and um, to demonstrate how, feel, how um, uh, it works and how um, uh, the user experience is shaped and um, created. Okay. So about the estimated cost, um, we're using existing technology and uh, of the digital platform, and the physical uh, RFID component is within a affordable um, range, and the surface itself is customized with a, uh, is is with customized map for uh, selected cities in the pilot phase. So by receiving a one-time uh, charge of a subscription fee and uh, delivery fee, uh, we can expect the sweet cost of under $50 uh, of the cost and reaching a unique pro um, value proposition. So we can imagine our future roadmap uh, to secure the partners, partners and to secure the investors and to issue at least 50 samples as uh, such a device and to distribute and to um, send send out this 50 device to different countries, to different contexts, including um, different institutions and including the families, and to, to find the market and to find the collaborators, and most important, importantly, to inspire and spark um, new ways to build confidence and help families with SMRs. So thank you very much. Thank you. We have a question at the front. Wait. Two questions. 
Um, in the example featured in the video, if he were to turn around and walk past the ice cream shop three or four times, would he receive an alert every time with the same story? And the second question is for someone with you know, moderate dementia who may not be leaving home to experience all these different places in the city, how else can those recorded stories be accessed? Yeah, so uh, in the first case, I think it would play the story every time one passes through. And it's also something which they enjoy because they would like to know the story over and over again. And for, uh, since our project was mostly about early stages of Alzheimer's, but even in the middle or severely stronger stages, uh, I think the physical device at home is actually, uh, it helps revisit those stories. So even if the person is not out there on the go in different locations, but the whole idea is to preserve these stories on the physical device at home. And that kind of acts as a conversation starter around that. Yes, did you consider instead of using the RFID tags, using something like a, a, a printed uh, QR code or something on the map so that, uh, you know, that takes that expense and then also as you create things you could affix the QR code to the map? So for the technology part. Um, so we've been thinking about different solutions. The QR code is also one of that. Then in that case, we need a, a camera that if the de device itself is with camera beneath, then it's possible to uh, scan the, the QR code with a uh, reasonable light so, situation. But um, for the first stage, we're looking into uh, technology that's more um, stable and readily uh, used already. And we know that an um, RFID is used in most uh, inventory spaces. And uh, comparing to NFC is also, because NFC is a growing technology and it's amazing, but uh, we're uh, sticking a little bit back um, to uh, stick to a more stable technology so far. And that's also why we're uh, asking for um, having the first 50 uh, devices made and distribute, distributed to see uh, how efficient and how it can work the best. Mm. So I had a question about how you handle the multitudes of places. Um, do you, you know, do you, would you sell these things as this is the Palo Alto version or can you overlay your own map as a user? Uh, so for the pilot phase, the idea was uh, to uh, pilot it across different countries, so maybe in the US, so key cities here, and uh, back uh, in Denmark and in India and Taiwan. Uh, and the idea was to have like a set of customized maps, but uh, we would definitely scale this further. And so then it would be like you can do it for different places, and it would be like a service in itself. Hi. It, is it possible to customize these maps through time? So if somebody wanted to tell you about their trip to Paris in the 40s? Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that would be really interesting because uh, this whole service can be developed around that. And uh, it could probably scale up. And we could plan different business models where you can, like right now, we're just looking at a one-time cost of just buying this. But it could be like a service where you can keep uh, on purchasing and yeah, you can add to uh, that. We're now looking to start from their home. So that's the space where they are living now. Mm -hmm. And if they also have more experience uh, and memories in another city, like their uh, grandparents' home or, or friends' place. And it's, you can imagine uh, to stack these different devices in an array, and you can have a bigger map of your memories. All right. I think uh, we're just in the final few seconds, if there's any other Q&A. But if not, a big thank you very much to uh, all. Thank you. To all.